Hello everybody and welcome back to Solaris. Uh, we are currently looking at the homeworld of the Coalition, uh, Panexala Prima, which is soon to be occupied by our military. We have a transport fleet on the way, um, which will be there in, I guess, a little over a year. Um, it looks like actually this transport fleet is set to go through the Borbagon system, which now has a dragon that's guarding the Rubricator, who threatened to... Um, who threatened to murder any of our ships that dare come through the system. So I think I'm gonna steer clear. So I'm going to take this transport fleet. I'm gonna say go to Flump. Uh, no, actually go to Perseus. And then I'm going to append um, the order to go to Panexala. And then after that, I'm going to give them one more order, land armies there. Okay. So now it should be taking the long way around, but at least we're going to avoid entering this system with the dragon. Um, let's see how our planets are doing. Four available jobs, four housing, one available job, two housing, two jobs, one housing, no jobs and no housing, and actually unemployment. You know, I actually know. I think this unemployment is good because we have a consumer goods deficit. So the, fa the planet that I really want to grow my population on is Corim. So for now, we're going to take a little bit of unemployment because eventually those unemployed pops will relocate themselves to planets with available jobs. And we want to make sure those available jobs are on this planet for now. Um, so we're going to say that's fine for the time being. Um, we have um, a fleet in here, which we can probably move to stop bo start bombarding the, uh, the planet. Once they're done with this engagement, I think they're currently just destroying some transport ships. Um, we have our uh, flagship that is over here conquering some more star systems from uh, the Coalition. And down here we have um, a construction ship that I actually have forgotten that what I wanted to do with it. I want to actually make a priority of building a star base in Dacha. This is the uh, system with seven Gaia worlds in it and a pre-FTL civilization that seems to be spanning all the Gaia worlds. Um, I want to establish control over this civilization, uh, over the system, so that we can start um, learning about from the civilization, observing them, and maybe even establishing contact with them. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and set that order for our construction ship, and we can move back and build all our mining stations and whatnot uh, at a later time. Okay, uh, without further ado, I think it's time to unpause the game and we'll see where today takes us. A thunderous rumble emits from the dragon's belly. Suddenly her wings are wrapped up around the ship, her steamy breath fogging up the windshield as she peers inside, a maniacal glint in her eyes. How did she get so close and so fast and is she smiling? Why, you wet my appetite, little ones. She purrs softly, then lunges with all her might, fangs exposed. Battle stations. Um, Spaceport under attack. Okay, good thing we didn't move our transport, uh, our transport fleet through here. She just turned hostile and she's attacking us. She's attacking our starbase. Okay, well, there's nothing we can do to save that starbase. Um, okay. Spaceport lost. Unfortunate. Unfortunate. Hopefully the dragon stays in the system and doesn't decide to continue attacking us because I don't know what we're going to do if that's the case. Um, I think there's a way to blacklist the system. I don't remember how. I've done it like one time before. So that we don't send any fleets through here. Oh right, yep, it's right here. This button right here says system not restricted. If I click it, now the system is restricted. So if I give a fleet a move order, it'll automatically avoid the system, um, which I think <laughs> is definitely a priority. Okay, um, great. Well, unpause the game again. That scared me, but it seems like as long as the dragon just hangs out here and we avoid the system, we should be fine. Uh, maybe once we're done with the war, we can think about building up a fleet big enough to take on the dragon. Wouldn't be a bad shout. Okay, um, so our fleet here, I think, is uh, needs to be bombarding Panexala. 
All right. Hostile fleet engaged. And here, of Hostile course. Hostile station engaged. Spaceport under attack. We are continuing to establish control over these systems here. Maybe we're going to go over to Zoldior and then back down into Panaxala. Okay. So, um, it looks like uh, everything is going pretty well for us today. Um, we just need to get on top of our economy and end this war. <clears throat> Hostile fleet engaged. The silence. Excavation at Sismak 2 has revealed a number of fossils clearly related to the bull, but curiously, these specimens appear to have been oh, appear to have diminished neurological organs required for subspace EFAPS communication, that is to say, the ability to communicate neurologically over great distances, a faculty unique to hive minds. Okay, so this is um their ability to um, kind of be one mind even though they have distinct bodies um, what definitive causes may have precipitated this evolutionary swing are unknown though it would be remiss to assume the Gruner invasion was unrelated so maybe the Gruner were messing with their biology too ruining if you want to destroy the hive mind um, what what a better way than to just like destroy their ability to communicate spaceport under attack um, do we have Orbital Marmot set to indiscriminate. That's good. I think that's what we want. That'll get more progress on the planet quickly. Special pro uh, project completed. As before, a convoy of freighters was assembled to safely transport the Dothna colonists to pressurized gas tanks. After a brief journey, they successfully made planetfall on the gas giant they have named New Baldurak. A, si a satellite was left in orbit to allow for long-range communication with Baldurak. All right. Let's see, where is New Baldurak? Uh, Taramanda 4. So it's not in the, Fe the Fevnor system. Tamaranda 4. Here it is. New Baldurak. Okay, so this is their second planet. Hello, Valdari. Would you be willing to do us a favor? Baldurak's strong gravity well pulls all kinds of trash into our atmosphere. And at a recent council meeting, we decided to step up our cleaning efforts. Uh, one of our reclamation units came across a discarded cargo pod, and we're wondering if you'd be willing to help us dispose of it. It seems to contain large quantities of various worthless metals. Uh, yeah, we'll take that from you. You don't need to ask us twice. Worthless to you. Valuable to us. A thousand minerals. Fantastic. All right. So let's see what the um, the fleet power on Panaxala is. They have a garrison of 374, which actually our transport fleet's not going to be enough. So hopefully our bombardment's going to do some good work before our transport fleet arrives. I think I gave it the order to automatically land armies, but I think we're just going to enter orbit for now until we know that we can actually win that engagement. Um, okay, our science ship needs orders. Um, what are we doing in this system? I guess nothing. Oh, this was the uh, fleet set to uh, relocate the um, Dathnak. So I guess now we might as well just start excavating some archaeological sites. So let's do the Seeds of Destruction. We have discovered an ancient alien starship lying half buried in an asteroid crater. Glacial ice has inexorably spread across most of the ships, but we can easily access the airlock. All right. So let's figure out what's up with this crashed ship here. Um, and we have another um, science ship that's idle right now. And I think we're gonna use that science ship to assist research on Favaria. We don't need to rush all the archaeological sites. We will get them all re eventually, um, but for the time being, um, it'd be good to have um, just some bonus research output. Is that not an option available anymore? I thought... Hmm. We'll have to see. Governing ethics shift in the Mythfell order. 
Following a long period of growing support for the Banner of Triumph, the Mythfell Order has finally embraced the faction, adopting their core values and policies. As a result of bringing the faction into the government, they have become more outwardly militaristic. <laughs> No, that is not good for us. They abandoned their pacifist ways and they have turned Space into a militarist state. Spiritual, xenophobic, and militarist. Hostile fleet Man. engaged. Neighbor of the Year Award. We've got Mythfell Order. We've got the Coalition. We've got the Sandarin Authority. I think they're all xenophobic. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy. I have a feeling Station we're not going to get very many um, times of peace. Okay, so first first order of business, let's build some observation posts. That's going to be a hefty order. Six observation posts, 600 minerals, but it's going to be worth it. Hopefully we'll learn, we'll learn something. Um, okay, this science ship needs orders, and what is it doing out here in the middle of nowhere? It's my head of research. Oh, it was fleeing... No way. The coalition brought their fleet all the way up and over into the Sysmox system. Okay, let's see if they'll push for a status quo. Um, yeah, I don't want to drag out this war any longer than it needs to be. As much as it would be nice to humiliate uh, our attackers, um, I don't think it's worth it. I don't want to lose, um, lose territory to them here. So I'm going to... Settle for... Yeah, I'm gonna settle for a status quo. So hopefully they, they accept this offer. Hostile fleet detected. And do they accept? Okay. They accept. Our borders have grown. We occupied Sasara, Unamar. Okay, so let's see. This is just uh, three energy, but it has a gas in here. So um, exotic gases in this system. So that's a good system to gain control over. Unamar is really rich, um, 14, 14 minerals there. Um, and of course, more, most critically, we gained access to the Ubalar, Ubalon system. So now if we want to, um, Defend our borders. We only need to fortify Jorwar and Yubalon, just these two, and that way, the um, the coalition will not be able to encroach into our territory without coming through these two choke points. All right. Status quo. Yes, please. Okay. Let's move our military back to Huawei. Let's move our fleets back to Huawei. And we will see about upgrading our ship to deal with this dragon. I don't know how f powerful our fleet needs to be, but we might as well try to try to fight it while we're not at war and see what happens. Um, so let's go back to excavating the site um, in Sismak, and we want to make sure we're getting the right site. Okay, we can actually do debris, so let's actually research the debris. And then, um, this is the, no, this is robot debris. This is the, the Gruner. No, not the Gruner, the Bolt Colony. So after we're done researching that debris, then we're gonna go and we're going to... Continue researching this. Okay. Council agenda available. Fantastic. Council agenda available. Looks like we're still working on a council agenda. Okay, so. It feels nice to not be at war. It feels really nice, actually. We can uh, start getting on top of our economy again and look into matters of more importance like science, prosperity. Who watches? The watchers. What's this? We built an observation post around Sol 10 to study its inhabitants, only to realize the Habintes are the ones studying us. They are fully aware of the existence of other alien species and have quickly noticed the existence of our science, our scientists and drones. <laughs> That's cool. So we're watching them and they're watching us back as we build our observation posts. Our previous activity in the solar system must have alerted the Habnite unified worlds of our presence. Keeping our existence hidden is meaningless at this point. 
All right, yet another alien species to come into contact with. Ugh, these things are ugly. Oh, is this how you communicate? We have been watching you ever since you entered through the hyperlane, but couldn't figure it out. Isn't it dangerous to travel in those metal boxes? It seems we could learn a lot from each other, so if that is your intention, feel free to stay. If you wish to claim our home, be aware that we are not helpless. Um... We are more alike than you realize. Let's not try, let's not provoke them. We have had enough enough enemies around us. Okay, so let's see. Rivalry, rivalry, rivalry. Um, we need to think about maybe starting to make some friends. So who's the most likely friend for us? These folks are militarists, and they're not um, fanatic. So if I send an envoy to improve relations with them, I don't think we're getting along with these folks. Maybe we could. Fanatic xenophobe, that's kind of intense. Maybe we seek to patch things up with the coalition. Okay, so we're going to send our envoys to improve relations with our two immediate neighbors here. So hopefully uh, we don't have any war like that. Uh, ever again. Okay. Fantastic. Okay, we'll bump up the speed. Since we're not at war, um, we can probably afford to have a faster speed because there's less going on now. Bridge between worlds. Okay. This sounds like we finally figured out how they're traveling between their different worlds without using spaceships. The pre-FTLs of Dodge are somehow more adept with hyperlane theory than we are. Every one of their worlds are linked to each other through an artificial hyperlane network. These lanes are used to transport necessary resources like food or building materials to their other worlds just by using planet-bound trains, and we have no idea how they did it. A request for more scientists to study these worlds has been approved. Though, judging by the activity at their planetary listening posts, we are not the only ones looking at the aliens. All right. Great. Let's see if we can uh, learn something about hyperlane theory from this. Okay, so this science ship finished analyzing the debris. Can you not? All right. Oh yeah, let's excavate the site. Okay. Hopefully we can figure out um, the end result with um, With the bowl and the gruner. So I think maybe in one of the newer updates it eliminated the option for scientists to be able to uh, assist research on a world. I think now probably my guess is that you would have to station them as a governor on a world to improve the research there. So let's actually look at um, our research world right now which I think is we have as the state yet? No. For Talia. And let's think about stationing a scientist there to improve research. So, who is our scientist that needs orders that's not doing anything? This scientist. This is Bonnie the Aaron. Okay. So, let's go ahead and let's. Assign Bonnie Baron to govern Portalia. Okay, so sector governor effects, planet governor effects. Okay, so she's improving research on this planet. That's perfect. Um, now we have a free governor that we can move to a different planet. Um, and I think it would be worth governing our new uh, industrial world. Especially because we have some crime building, so we're going to want some oversight here. Okay. Fantastic. New um, progress on the Seeds of Destruction site. When we opened the airlock of the alien starship, putrefaction and decay awaited us on the other side. Ew. 
Must have been a recent crash then, if there's still putrefaction and decay. Our preliminary investigation has uncovered a scene of carnage. After examining the, multi the mutilated bodies of the crew, we are certain they tore each other limb from limb. We could just leave, but then we'd never know why this tragedy happened. Oh my gosh. Hopefully that doesn't spell out the future for us. Beautiful bubble. Remind me what's um what's happening here. Once down on the surface of Rovanic 5A, it was clear that a civilization indeed flourished here until recently as few centuries ago. At some point, a sudden total catastrophic event gripped the world. Apparently, some sort of uh, internecine struggle between nation states led to a terminal exchange of weapons of mass destruction. Hmm, nuclear war? Oddly, although the surface is scarred clean and dead, the sky is alive with shifting hues of a perpetual aurora borealis. It is the striking vista, the desolate steel and stone carcasses of entire cities, painted by vibrant, scintillating colors dancing in the sky. Wow. Let's keep digging. Okay, Research so this science complete. ship now has no scientists, so we're going to disband it. We don't need it anymore. All right. We unlocked the ability to exploit rare crystals. And now we have the option between... I don't want gas refineries because that's not going to give us the option to build mining stations in space. Um, destroyer hull points, nothing important. We don't really have any destroyers in our crew yet. We will we will eventually incorporate them into our fleet. Um, auto cannons, not a bad shout. Engineering research from researchers. Minerals from researchers. Starbase building and module cost. It's just not that good. You don't end up spending that much on your starbase in the long run. Yeah, I'm going I'm going for super solid materials. All right. We will continue and we will move our fleet back to Huawei. I thought we had already given that order. All right. So, how's Corum doing? We have 5 available jobs. Um, let's actually make Fortalia the center of its own sector. Okay. So now if we look at our sectors. Yeah, this is kind of just living in its own sector, just right here. Um, it might be worth building a construction ship. So that we can start building, uh, accessing these rare crystals. Okay, encounter and Raltree. We have made first contact with mysterious aliens in the Raltree system. For now, we have codenamed them the Ion Menace until we can find out more about them. If they possess a language, we should decipher it so that we can assess how much of a threat they pose. Okay, um, let's go ahead and find where the Raltree system even is. Um, so they're in the Fallen Empire's territory. Ah, these are the um, the crystal shards. Okay, we don't have an envoy to spend on this, but we will we will look into it. Maybe once we've solidified better relations with our neighbors a little bit. Um, one of our scientists can level up, and we can give them either evasiveness, not that good, or observer, also not that good. Wow. Guess we'll go for observer. All right, digging deeper, we have uncovered the ship's science lab. Minimal power saturates the scene in ultraviolet illumination. A riot of purple shrubbery is releasing thick clouds of spores. The ship's doctor used the laboratory ventilation shafts to flood the ships with an intoxicating mist. Uh-oh, are we gonna start tearing each other apart limb from limb? I hope not, I certainly hope not. Our construction ship is ready, so let's go ahead and move around our empire. Um, and let's get access to these rare crystals. Okay, so Toyobos needs some mining stations as well and research stations um, Before we do that we might as well stop in Tamaranda and then after that we can build Mining station here. We can build a mining station here 
And then I think we might um, continue building stations in Shashamar, Tunobo, Bogor, and Rebulon, just to kind of round out our borders. Alright, this construction ship needs orders, then let's build a store base in Zatar. There's a timed project, debris in Panaxala. Research complete. Um, I don't know if they're going to let our science ships in. Pop growth speed plus 10%, fantastic. More naval capacity, if we want to take on this dragon, we're going to need it. Heritage site would be not a bad shout, but definitely more naval capacity. Um, Alright, the silence. Younger bull fossil specimens have been uncovered from the geological record, though these no longer have diminished hive neurologies. Instead, the structures required for subspace EFAPS communication are entirely missing. Wow, it's like the, the entire species just like changed biologically. Carbon dating of the specimens has confirmed that some hundreds of years following the Gruner invasion, the bull began to devolve their ability to connect to one another as a hive mind. Unfortunately, it seems no further relevant data can be extracted from this site. How strange. All right, so what does that mean for our scientists? Gruner distress signal. The Gruner still exist? Our scientists are picking up a distress signal bearing Gruner datalogical signatures. It appears to originate from a system previously unknown to us near Yarak. Interesting. It's down here. It's got a tomb world. What kind of ancient message could it possibly contain? Our scientists would like to investigate the signal's point of origin. Let's go talk to these Gruner and see what they have to say for themselves. Research project and system. In fact, um, yeah, I think once we're done with all these construction orders, we're going to move this construction ship down here and establish control over that system. All right, we finished building all our observation posts. Then let's move into, yeah, let's, uh, no, this is too good to pass up. Let's get all the research and mining stations here, and then we'll move into Sudrama, which is also a really good system for us. Okay, um, so let's figure out what state our fleet is in in just a second and see about upgrading it to deal with this dragon. I'm guessing the dragon doesn't have shields because it's biological, so we want things that target um, hull and um, hull and armor, which is lasers and the missiles, which we currently have. Um, but our missiles are still level 1. We have never got the option to research level 2 missiles, so maybe it would be worth um, retrofitting our, sh our ships to use lasers now. Um, we think we are immune to the full effects of the intoxicating mist. If we can get to the ship's engines online, we can launch the ship and send it back home for study. This will take time, but the elaborate pharmaceutical laboratory may provide useful uh, biochemical augmentation for our Empire's soldiers. Um, so we want to fly at home. Let's make sure that we're running diagnostics and making repairs before we just take the reactor online. We don't want to explode the ship or anything. We foolishly thought that we were immune to the mist, but our scientists are experiencing fits of psychotic rage. Fighting has broken out ship-wide. We will need to clear the atmosphere and subdue the mist victims before we can launch the ship. This delay will cost us time. Wow. It's a good thing we were careful we didn't just bring that back to our home planet. Imagine the chaos that would cause. Construction complete. All right, Zatar. We can establish an observation post. And mining stations. New contact. We have received communique from a previously unknown spacefaring empire that call themselves the Malarnock centralized commonalities. They claim to have learned of our existence by listening in on the communications of another empire we are in contact with. All right, what's your deal? You're authoritarian. We don't like that. You're a materialist. All right. We are the Malarnock centralized commonalities. Minions of the wise overlord Arklon One. Our aim, Arklon the First, I guess. Our aim is to improve ourselves through the use of technology. Whether you agree with these goals or not, we trust you will remain amicable neighbors. Alright. Do not interfere with our endeavors. Where are they? 
Okay, they're far away. They're not really relevant to us. How is improving our relations going? They're harming our relations, and we're trying to improve them. So, Research complete. we're kind of at a stalemate there. I'm guessing same deal here? Yeah. Well, we have to try. Hyperlanes. Great. Um, so we could improve our physics research from researchers. We could get even better um, fusion reactors. We can get plasma throwers. Eh. Reactor boosters. Eh. Let's go um, physics research from researchers. So this is the Gruner system, huh? Seeds of destruction. We have liftoff. Though dangerous, the alien ship's intoxicating mist could augment the effectiveness and loyalty of our Empire's soldiers. However, the question remains, should we subject our own soldiers to this hazardous substance, or should we say no and learn from their tragic mistakes? Um... I think we're... This is kind of like giving drugs to our soldiers to improve their effectiveness. Um, I mean, we are a militarist society and we have been plagued with wars um, for our fighting for our entire existence. So maybe it would be worth creating something, exploiting this, this gas to make our soldiers more deadly. Army damage plus 5%. Yeah, let's do it. All right. And that concludes that um, archaeological site. Let's go ahead and move to the Toyobo system where the two angled, this is the artificial looking planet. Find out why this planet looks artificially constructed or at least sculpted. I see a colony ship. Are they colonizing a new world? Perhaps they are. Um, Let's go ahead and let's actually downgrade the Sasara Starbase. And let's build one in Ubalon. And let's also build one in one of these two systems. Let's build it in Waltham. Okay, so we want to basically have our Sysmok Bastion, Drawar, Ubalon Bastions, Waltham Bastion. Then close to these bastions, I want to have shipyards where we can reinforce, repair, and upgrade our fleets. Complete. That's not far from the borders. So that we can quickly fall back, upgrade, and repair, and go back. Um, so we'll probably want a kind of shipyard station in this area, a shipyard in this area, and a shipyard in this area. And then, um, in fact, Maybe like a shipyard in Helito would be fine and good enough to service both the Walton border and this border, but we'll see. The bull organism, the ISS the teaming crew have traced the Gruner distress signal to its source, uncovering a crumbling Gruner research facility hanging in orbit of an otherwise long abandoned planet. The facility is reaching critical energy failure, having survived for millions of years on an extensive network of solar panels and decaying auto repair systems all of which are now approaching terminal status. Shockingly enough, scans of the facility are revealing the presence of a single life form. The crew have dispatched an away team and are ready to report. All right, who is this one alive signal? Is it the last remaining Gruner alive? No, it's the last bull. Deep in the dilapidated ruins of the time-worn Gruner research facility, among the long-defunct computer panels and deteriorated research equipment, our ship's crew has made an incredible find. Pincushioned by nutrient tubes and critically failing life support systems lies one single organism, the last bull, miraculously still alive, in the Gruner system of all places. Surrounded by the sludgy remains of other specimens in a row of cracked and leaking vats, Owing to our extensive previous archaeological studies on the species, we should be able to attempt communications with this last specimen. Then let us try. A visitor? Can it be? The last bull shudders in its vat. But you are not the ones who put us here, though you come as the alarms sound. Have you come to give us peace at last?
Perhaps, but first we have a few questions. The last bowl silent for several minutes, then ask. We have waited millennia. We can endure a moment more. Tell us about yourself. Our self. Our self. Yes. What is it like? What is it? What is there to tell? We sat beneath the stars on soft earth unfurled our leaves like sails to the sun overhead. We remembered every drop of water that quenched them in the parched summers, every shivering whore that blanketed them in winters. We bent in the wind as the stars wheeled overhead. We were uprooted, we were burned, we were sliced. This must be the crooner. We were left here. We watched our others rot in glass prisons. So the crooner like destroyed their civilization and they kept like a few s specimens alive in vats. That's horrible. What happened? Again, the bull is long silent before managing a reply. When the burners came, entire colonies were silenced before the danger was known to us. Like a limb gone limp, nerves cut suddenly and totally at the base. And then we lo lost the next and the next and the next. One by one, their voices left the chorus. We lost our others. Their silence deafened us, who remained. Can you understand, visitor? We could not bear to hear more agony. The burners were swift, like you. Swifter, before we could withdraw, they had set us aflame, and burnt to ash, and their air filled that with grey agony, the dust of our loss. Alright. Um, I guess we've heard enough. Wait. Before it all ends, our kin, please. We have been sealed here for so long, blind to all this room, watching the stale air slowly wear away the station down to its metal bones. Tell us, does our kind yet live? In a sense, though they are no longer sapient. I don't remember this. Was there like pre-sapient species on a planet? Slowly, almost imperceptibly, the leaves of the last bowl shrivel on themselves just a little more. Perhaps, perhaps that is best. The machine pumping mysterious fluids in and out of the creature's body begins to sputter and hiss. It is clearly on its last mechanical gasp, and the last bowl will perish without it. Silence, yes. At last it approaches. We welcome it, as our brethren did so long ago. Farewell, Valdar. May your kin endure less agony in this world. Farewell. Wow. We got a relic, the last bowl. It's dead now, and it's in a vat. Okay, passive effects. We just get an empire wide plus 10% pop growth speed. Fantastic. Active effects unlocks decision new bowl life seeding, granting the ability to turn one non ecumenopolis, non hive world, non machine world into a Gaia world. Are you kidding me? I can't believe I've never gotten this precursor before. This is so good. It's like terraforming, but we get Gaia terraforming straight away. And it just costs 3000 unity for a Gaia world? Let's do it. Um, okay. The real question is, do I start on a world I've already inhabited or do I terraform a world that's uninhabitable to us right now to make it habitable so we can expand. I think we should try these tomb worlds. Like, um, this is a size 20 tomb world here. This is a size 22 tomb world here. Those are big worlds that we can improve. Sysmark, size 20. Jaltham, size 19. Yeah, I think we will eventually turn our original planets into Gaia worlds, but let's actually focus on getting some new planets. So. Let's activate this relic. It costs us 3,000 unity. It's a steep price. But now we should be able to say... Oh, you can't take a decision on a planet that hasn't yet been colonized. Okay, so... Next time the cooldown ends... Hmm... I wonder if I build a colony ship. 
how quickly I can get this um, colony onto I think we'll go to Jaltham first because that's like nice in our core territory. Yeah, okay, so we're going to build a colony ship. We're going to quickly colonize Jaltham. Then it should allow us to take a decision on the planet to terraform it into a Gaia world. Let's do it. All right, so our bowl specialist, our head of research, needs a new project. Okay, come up to the Sysmox system. The entire surface of this small asteroid is covered in robot debris, trapped in its weak gravity field. All of it appears military in nature, and there are enough combat droids here to outfit several armies had they not been shattered beyond all repair. Yep, let's come figure out what's going on here. Um, and with that, I think this is a good stopping point uh, for the episode. Uh, we've made a lot of progress. We ended the war. In so doing, we uh, expanded our borders, um, critically gaining access to um, exotic gases. Um, we are working on fortifying those borders right now. We are building star bases here. And we will actually upgrade them to level three, I guess, star bases in a second. Um, we need to think about building some shipyards. And we are now have the ability to um, terraform worlds into Gaia worlds, I think, via a planet decision. So we need to colonize them first. Um, so we're going to go ahead and uh, colonize some uninhabitable worlds and turn them into Gaia worlds and expand our species. Um, yeah, this is a super successful episode in my opinion. Thank you guys so much for watching and please stay tuned for the next episode where hopefully um, we can get on top of our consumer goods situation and be profitable enough to consider taking the fight towards one of our uncooperative neighbors. Um, so I'll see you guys next time.